Welcome! In this video I'm going to be taking a look at this eco-worthy 3000 watt 12 volt pure sine wave inverter charger. So this is provided to me by the distributor but they're not compensating me for this video and they're not reviewing it before I post it. If you find this video helpful and you want to purchase one of these I'll put a link to it in the description and if you use that link it helps me out a little bit and does it cost thing extra. Let's get this open. So here we have some cables. Here's the manual. I'm going to pull this off my bench to get out of the package. Here we have the inverter charger. Let's take a quick look at the manual. Now I'm not going to cover everything in here. You'll want to read through it on your own. It looks like we have some notes. This shows the different parts. So you can pause and read through this. This shows the rear, has a multi-function display, has an optional remote control panel, sample wiring. Here's estimated runtime. This talks about using a fuse or circuit breaker, DC input cable, talks about grounding, AC wiring, installing the unit, DC ground connection, like some more notes, different sensors, operating it, different icons, there's alarm function, charging profile for different types of batteries. This talks about a lot of different settings, different error codes. Here's the spec sheet. So AC output power is 3000 watts. AC output current is 25 amps. Surge power is 6000 watts. It says AC output voltage. It says 12 volts AC. I think that's supposed to be 120 volts AC, 60 hertz. Input voltage is 12.5 volts. Now this has a built-in UPS feature. So the transfer time is less than 30 milliseconds. And we have some more specs back here. So this will work with gel, flooded, AGM, lithium. It says program and power supply. Weight on this is 16.3 pounds. And we have the dimensions there also. So lots in the manual. You'll probably want to read through this before you do a full setup of it. Let's take a look at the unit. So we have a lot of the specs on the side here. You can't see it on camera, but those are similar to ones in the manual. We have the control here. We have some vents and some warnings. If we look here, we have some fans for cooling. Vents on the other side. And this is where most things are. So we have the input lugs for the 12 volts. You can see these are very beefy. So for an inverter this size, you need to have big terminals. We have some different program ports. We have on off, breaker. We have a 20 amp GFCI outlet. And this is the AC output. So this is for wiring in the AC. And this here looks like we'll unscrew to connect it up. So let me unscrew that. So here we have the neutrals are on the outside and the lines are on the inside. And then the ground is off to the side there. Let's take a look at these cables here. So we have some rubberized boots to go over the terminals. So those will go on here. Here's an AC power cable. And I guess I wasn't really looking at the time, but this is the AC input. This is the AC output. Then we have two battery cables. I'm going to leave these wrapped up until I'm ready to connect them. I'll share the size with you later. So those are the basic parts that come with this. Now there's lots of uses for one of these. This could be good for a van build. You could put this in an RV camper. You might have a tool truck or a work truck that you want to have power in. I'm probably mostly going to use this for emergency power or backup power. So I'm going to read through the manual in a little bit more detail and then I'll get this set up and then I'll go through how it's set up. Okay, so I have some components gathered so I can start wiring this. So the first thing I'm going to wire is the AC charge cable. And this is just under five foot. Now the cables for the battery here, these are around five foot also. So we have two screw terminals here and we're on the AC input side. And then this plug comes with three connectors and they're all tinned, but the ground needs to go into this grounding lug here. So I actually cut the tinned part off and I crimped on a ring connector. So I need to pass all of those through this grommet. So I'll put the cap on first. Then I'll put the rubber grommet on. And now I can pass it through the hole. Is a little bit tight here. So I'm going to scoot the grommet in there. I'll put the cap on and I'll at least start to tighten it down. I may adjust this. So I'll put the ground on first and it will be below everything else. I'll insert the ground screw. I'm not going to tighten that down all the way until I know exactly where everything's going to sit. Pull this down a little bit. Now these screws are screwed down all the way. So I'm going to take a screwdriver and loosen them up. Now I need to stick the hot or the line in this one and the neutral in this one. So I have that all the way in and I'll tighten the screw down and I'm going to press down on the wire while I do that. I have both of those tight now I'll finish tightening my ground lug and I'll tighten the grommet all the way down. I'll give it a little tug that's secure. So now this part is finished. I'll put the plate back on. I'm not going to wire in any AC output right now. I'll just use the plug that's built in. Now to put this on, you want to hinge it off the side and then slide it in. Now I'm going to hook up the DC cables. Now you want to hook it up to your inverter before you hook it up to the battery. If you hooked it up to the battery first and you touch these, you could short it out. And I'm not going to cover everything in here you need to know about DC wiring. 
So you want to do your research on that too. So I'll take these off. I'll line this up and I'll take the boot and I'll slip it over the end here, straighten this out. So this is two watt cable, so it's very thick. Place it over the end and I'll place the nut on there. Now the torque on this is 12 to 13 Newton meters. So I'll torque it down. And I want that coming off there straight so the boot fits on. So there we're torqued at 12. So I have the negative on. If you forget to put the boot on, you could put it on from the other end. So I'll get the boots on. Okay, the boots are on. Next, I'm going to connect them up to my batteries. So I'm going to be using two 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate batteries. So I won't be able to get the whole 3000 watts out of this. I'd want to hook up a third battery if I did that, but this will give me 200 amps continuous discharge. Now this will surge up to 200 amps each for up to three seconds. So you want to size your system depending on what your needs are. So I'm going to be running these in parallel. Now I do have some smaller cables between the batteries because I'll only be sending 100 amps across that and I'll be sending 200 to the inverter charger. So to hook this up, I want to hook up the positive to one battery, the negative to the opposite battery. So if I had a bank of three, I'd split that apart and that helps keep things in balance. So I'll start by hooking up the positive. So I like to put the terminal to my load in between the jumper. So I'll place that on, I'll place the jumper. I'll start screwing that down and then I will start connecting up the other terminal. And I'll torque that down. And I usually torque these to around 10. I don't have a torque spec for these batteries. But now I want to make sure I don't bridge the terminals when I do this. Now I'm just setting this up for demonstration here. For a permanent install, you should most definitely have a DC disconnect switch and a DC rated fuse. Now I've already balanced these batteries so they're at the same charge. So I'm going to hook this one up to the back battery. I'm going to temporarily connect it to the front. I'll torque the back down and I'll place these covers on the positive too. And I can pull this off. And to connect it to the terminal, I'm going to use this pre-charge resistor. This is a 50 watt, six ohm resistor. I'll hold it on the terminal and I'll touch it here. And I'll hold that on there for a second. I don't know if this is necessary, but it doesn't hurt. Now, if you don't have a pre-charge resistor, you can touch it there and it might just do a little spark. So I am going to install this in between like I did on the positive. Now, since I don't have a fuse on here or a circuit breaker, I want to make sure I definitely don't have these short out. So we have the full system hooked up now. Peel this plastic off. I should be able to power it up. So to turn this on, I want to hold down this button until I hear a beep. So we got the beep. We have the display on. So here we can see the display. So it looks like we're going to want the book. So if we look on page 21, we have the unit setting function chart. So I'm going to go over to the second page, we have battery type is F9. So I'll press menu set and I will go down to F9. So I want to hold down menu set until it flashes. Now I can change this. Looks like it was set to lithium. So that J is really an I. So when you're on the setting you want, you hold down the menu set. And it beeps and then that is set. So let's check the output frequency and that is F18 and it's set to 60. So I think those are the only settings I really want to change at this time, but you can go through all the different settings and set it to how you want. So I think this is going to be set up with a 100 amp charge. So I am going to plug it into AC. So I have a power meter here, I'll plug into it. It says AC in flashing here. It's drawing 0.3 watts and it is on bypass mode. So that means it would be sending AC directly through. And I heard a fan kick on, now it's cranking up and it's drawing, it's like 400 watts, 500. So I'll let that settle out. Now here we can press down and we can look, it says 41 amps and 0.3 kilowatts, 14.4 volts. So I'm going to get a load I can connect to this. Here I have an air cleaner, I'll plug this in. So now that's running. So I'll turn off power here. And I heard just a little blip and it switched over to run from battery only. Turn it back on. And then we switch back to bypass mode. 
Let me find a greater load to test. In the meantime, I'll leave this plugged in to charge. Okay, so what I have over here is an electric heater. I think this can draw 14, 1500 watts on high. Now I've hooked up an amp meter here, and we're currently at minus 10 amps, so it's charging the battery. So I'll plug this in, and let's just go straight to battery. So we're currently drawing 5.6 amps. So I'm sorry you can't see the screen, it's just hard to show with this. I'm going to turn the heater on. We should be able to see here too. This is at zero. So it's on the highest setting, and here it says it's drawing 123 amps, and I'm getting about 130 out of here. So there is going to be overhead with the inverter. So now we're at 134, and we have 135, 136 here. So this is a pretty good size load on this system, and we have 1.4 kilowatt, or about 1400 watts. So I'm going to let this run for a bit. I'll let it run the battery down a little bit. Then we'll plug it in, and we can let this charge the batteries back up. Okay, so I've been running this for a bit. I'll go ahead and turn the heater off. The amps have dropped to zero. The fan is running. It takes very little power, and it runs for 30 seconds after you shut it off to cool it down. So the heater's off now. Now the fan is running on this. When I had the heater running, there's a fan on the heater, and it was much louder than this. This sounds like maybe a PC running. It's not super loud. It's a very subtle white noise. So now I'm going to plug this in. and it should start charging. So it's on bypass mode, although I'm not really running this load anymore. Okay, so I've let it sit for a minute, and it's charging. I put the meter on. Now we have minus 10 amps. So it's sending power back into the battery, and it's currently drawing around 240 watts. So depending on where it is in the charge cycle, you may see variances in that, and they have charts in here that kind of show the uh, charge cycle. So you can see the lithium charge cycle. So the fan is running a little bit as it's charging this. So that's the EcoWorthy 12 volt, 3000 watt inverter charger. So this is just a sample setup of what you can do with this. This is a very versatile inverter charger. So I have this hooked up to two batteries. You could hook this up to more and bigger batteries, but you could also hook it up to smaller batteries. I could hook it up to a single battery and then adjust this to lower the charge rate. So with the single battery, you could get maybe a thousand watts. So you could use this as a backup UPS for something like a server rack or some other equipment. Now, if you're building out a van for van life, with 3,000 watts, if you have enough batteries, you can hook something like an induction cooktop up to this, no problem. You could hook a heater up to it like I did, but it won't run a tremendous amount of time unless you have a lot of batteries, and even then, it's not the most efficient way to heat. But if you're using a cooktop, you might use it for, say, 10-15 minutes. Of course, this could also run like an electric hot pot, so you could boil water with it. This could also be good for an off-grid cabin. You could wire the AC input into a generator input. So you can charge it up with a generator. Now, if you want to hook up solar, you'd get a solar charge controller and wire those directly into your batteries. So you could have a solar setup with this that's separate. And then if the sun is not out for a couple days, fall back to the generator. Now in van life, you could have an external plug. So you could plug this in an RV park to charge up your batteries. And since it's adjustable, if you were, say, going to a friend's house and they had an extension cord with not a lot of power on it, you can dial that power back to charge the batteries up more slowly. So as I said before, in a full setup, you'd want a disconnect on your positive and also a fuse. And you might also want things like bus bars. You could put a shunt in to monitor your batteries. But a device like this covers a lot of the bases of your setup. So you don't have to have a separate inverter and charger. And it all gets managed from the one interface. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.